giving a player more of their body that rather than just the hands and head can really help a player feel even more immersed within their VR world. Whether it be the arms, legs, chest, or even any other part of the body, it's really neat to be able to see things like that. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to implement the arms, which is something more commonly used in a lot of VR titles. So that way players can see their arms move with their hands in VR. But before we jump into that, if you want to support the channel and want to see even more videos like this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so before we get too far into this, I want to note something here real quick. I am doing this tutorial on Unreal Engine 5. However, if you're doing this on Unreal Engine 4, you should have no problem following along still, as this is, I, I'm going to be using all the nodes that you can still find in Unreal Engine 4. So you should have no problem still following along with this tutorial if you're doing this on Unreal Engine 4. So with that note out of the way, First thing we're gonna need is we're going to need some arms and hands, preferably on one skeletal mesh that we can actually use for our, uh, for our setup here. So what I've actually done is I've actually brought in the arms and hands from the first person template in Unreal Engine 4. So we'll be working with these. So for me, it's under, for, uh, this skeletal mesh is under first person and I actually already kind of navigated down to this. So it's under first person character and then mesh. And right here, this is where our skeletal mesh is. So let's go and open this up real quick. And this is pretty standard skeletal mesh. We can actually go and open up the skeleton here as well. And we can actually see we got everything from the root all the way down to all of our index bone, all of our finger bones, and um, along with our arm bones, all that kind of stuff. You can also see we have a whole bunch that aren't actually in use for this, but that's not going to matter too much here. So to start out, let's go ahead and create a new asset here. And we're gonna to wanna to make an anim blueprint or animation blueprint. So let's go and click on that. And this is where we're actually going to create all of our setup for our hands. So this is actually not too difficult to do. So let's go and start by creating a couple variables here real quick. First one we're going to need is we're going to need a left motion controller. Okay, and we actually wanna look up real quick motion controller component. And we're gonna need two of these, one for each motion controller component. And I'll explain why we need these in just one second. The other thing we're gonna need is two transforms. Let me go and change these real quick to transform, left and transform. And this one as well will be a right hand transform. So let me explain this real quick. So what we're gonna be doing is right here, we're currently in our animation graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in our player, we're going to set our left and right motion controllers. Now we could alternatively just pass in our transforms. That certainly would be an option. However, I personally prefer to typically pass through our controllers rather than our transforms since it allows for us to later on grab other information from our controllers if we want them. Now, in order for this to work, we're actually going to be using a node here. Let me see here, fabric right here, fabric. If we actually hold down control all here, you can actually see it actually explains what it is. Forward and backward reaching inverse kinematics. Uh, essentially what this is going to do is we're going to give it two bones. It's going to be our clavicle as well as our hand left and as well for our, for our other hand as well, our clavicle right and our hand right. And it's essentially going to assume for where the rest of the bones in between those two points are. The clavicle bone will be pretty much stationary since that's going to be sitting right below the head. And our hand is going to move around with our motion controller components. So we're actually going to end up needing two of these uh, here at the end. So let me just go and copy and paste that so we have that here in a second. Um, we're not going to worry about this for a second though. So let's go ahead and move on to our event graph here real quick since we do need to come right over here. And the only thing we really need is our update here. So right here is where we're going to want to assign our transforms. And the reason for this is we'll actually get an error if we don't do it here. Uh, our left and right motion control are not set right at the beginning because it takes a second during a begin play in our player. So if we don't check to see if it's valid, we'll actually get an error right at the start. It's not a huge problem. It'll still run just fine. However, it can be a little bit annoying to get that error every single time. So we'll actually be checking to make sure both of our motion control components are valid. So to start out, let's go ahead and check to make sure it is valid. And actually, I wanna run this through a sequence as well. 
rather than running this all through one single node. And then let's also grab our right motion control component and do the same thing is valid. And then here, uh, assuming that they are valid, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to wanna set our transforms. Now, the worst that, that happens is that if it isn't valid, what it'll simply do is, you can actually see right over here, our transform is initially just set to zero, 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 um, you know, so on and so forth, essentially the world origin. So it's not going to be too much of a problem. Um, it's, it's basically just going to try and force our hands to go towards wherever the world origin is. So that's why we're actually just going to do that here. So set world transform, not set world transform, my bad. Get world transform. Go ahead and pass that in. Let me go and move this down a bit. Get world transform. And that's all we really need to do here in our event graph. We're completely set up here. And you can actually see it's already trying to start us off here. However, since we don't have a valid left and right motion controller component, it's currently just saying that it's stopping at valid. That'll actually change once we actually have this implemented into our player. But no worries right now. Now, moving on to our animation graph here. So as I said, the first note we're gonna be using is fabric. Um, or essentially that's what the shortened version of it. So let's go and set these up real quick. Uh, so for both of these, we're going to need to change our effector rotation. This we're going to want to do a uh, copy target rotation. And we're also going to want to change our effector transform to our world space for both. Now, the reason for this is that we're actually passing through the world space, not the component space. So because of that, we want to make sure that we are passing through the world space and we're actually doing the world space as opposed to component in order to make sure that we're actually getting a good position for our hands to go to. So that's the reason we're doing that here. Um, and again, like I said, we're gonna to wanna to do the same for our other fabric node over here, copy target rotation. Now, the other thing we're gonna to wanna to mess around with for both fabric nodes is our tip and our root bone. Our tip bone is going to be our target bone, the bone that we want our hand to move towards. Our root bone is going to be a pretty stationary bone. It's essentially going to be where, um, where our root is. So as I said, our root bone is gonna be our clavicle and our tip bone is going to be our hand. So we're gonna do that for both. Let's go and change this root bone, clavicle right, and tip bone is hand right, there we go. And we can go and pass those through now. And our effector transforms are gonna be these transforms that we actually set up earlier. So let's go and grab these real quick. And I believe this one was for left hand. Yes, it was. So our effector transform is going to be our target transform that we want our hands to go to. So let's go and pass those through right here. All right, so that's the very basics of what we need done. This will actually, this little part right here, what it'll actually do is it'll actually determine where our elbow will go, as well as our shoulder. It'll slightly reposition our shoulder as well. Our clavicle will be pretty much stationary. Now, this isn't completely done yet. We are going to need to do one more thing here, and that's going to be transform, let me see, transform, modify, there we go, transform, modify bone. Now, the reason we're actually doing a transform modify bone, let me actually create two here, is because our hand transforms are actually gonna be very slightly off. Um, so we're actually going to correct these just a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab our, our first one right here. We're going to set our first one to our hand right. And right here under rotation, since the only thing we need to correct is our rotation, what we'll actually do is we'll take our rotation We'll do add to existing. And for our right hand, we're actually going to add 180 to the Z. Then for our left hand, let's go ahead and set our left hand over here. And that's again going to be add to existing. Our left hand, we're going to add 180 to the X on the rotation. So let's go and feed that through. And we'll go ahead and put that right into our result here. And you can actually see it also converts it from component to local as well. Something I did almost forget is right here in both of our transform modified bones, we actually want to change this as well from component space to bone space. 
And with that, that'll actually correct our positioning on the hands. So if we actually compile save that, you can actually see it changed right here. So that way it's trying to force itself to the origin. You can also see it, it reposition where its arms are and all that as well. So you can actually go right in here. You can actually try and modify around some of these a little bit. So if I, for example, disconnected this, we can actually go right into here. Let's go and compile that real quick. We can actually move this around a little bit and see roughly what it'll look like. So you can actually see it's, it is moving around a little bit. Um, and you can actually see too, the shoulders move around just a little bit as well in order to kind of uh, reposition our hand to the position that we need it at. And you can also see as well, if it's out of reach of where our hand can actually go, it won't try and stretch to where it's trying to go. It'll essentially just go as close as it can to that point. So let's go and feed this back in here real quick. The other thing I wanna note here real quick is you can see right here we have a note. Uh, this note you really don't have to worry about. It's just saying that component pose was visible but ignored and that's because we don't have any component in. Essentially if you had any kind of blend space or anything like that, you'd probably want to put that in right here at the beginning. Um, but we don't have any blend spaces or anything like that. So we're just going to leave that alone. That note won't cause any issues. It's just there to let you know that component pose isn't really active right now. So that's all that we need to do here within our arm, uh, inside our uh, skeletal mesh. So let's go and close all this down and let's go and jump over into our player now. So let's see here, VR template, blueprints, and VR pawn. So here in our pawn, this is where we're going to want to actually put our arms here. So our arms are essentially going to go right below our, uh, our camera right here. So let's go ahead and add real quick a skeletal mesh. And we'll just go and call this arms. And we will, right over here, skeletal mesh, we're going to do the SK mannequin arms since that's the arms that we were using. And our animation class, you do want to make sure this is using an animation blueprint. And our animation class is going to be, what was it, SK, there it is, SK mannequin arms um, skeleton, I think it's anime blueprint. And let's go ahead and also move this because we don't want it all the way up above our head like this. We actually want to move this down a little bit. So let's go ahead and bring this down, uh, maybe a little bit lower. And they're gonna look a little bit distorted right now as well. It'll look a lot better once we actually have it open VR. So let's go ahead and do about negative 185, I think is pretty good. And we'll also go and rotate this a little bit as well. Oh, I think it's negative 90 if I recall. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure that that's good. So let's go and leave that there. Um, now let's go ahead and pass in those uh, those motion control components that we needed. So we'll go and do that right up here at begin play. So let's go and back this up here real quick. I'm gonna move this forward a little bit. Now I'm gonna do this right here at begin play so that way we can make sure our motion control components are being set correctly. And we're gonna wanna grab arms and we'll wanna get our anim instance. This is going to get the current instance of our animation that we're running, which in this case is gonna be our blueprint. We wanna cast this to SK mannequin arms since that's the blueprint that we were using. And then right after that, we're going to want to set both of our motion controller components. Set left motion controller. And let's also go ahead and set right motion controller. Let me go and fix this up just a little bit here real quick. And then we'll just need to pass, oops, that was the wrong thing. Now we just need to pass through our motion control components to their respective positions. And that will be it there. I am going to do one more thing here. If you're in uh, Unreal Engine 4, you shouldn't have to worry about this, but I do want to disable our, uh, our display mesh here, because otherwise we'll have these low uh, vibe ones that are overlapping with our arms, and that's just not gonna be a very pleasant look. Let's go and compile and save all that. And all this will work all right. So let's go ahead and open this up in VR and we will have a look at this. All right, so we are now here um, in VR now. So you can actually see now it works, you know, pretty decently. Uh, the only thing I would probably say, I think this rotation works pretty well for most controllers. For a Valve Index controller, I probably would have rotated it forward a little bit more and then maybe just a little bit in. But other than that, it works pretty well. It's 
uh, it's a pretty good position for the hand. You can actually see to the shadow. Um, unfortunately, I don't have like a mirror or something, so I can't show you full on how it's how it's looking in a mirror or something like that. But you can see based off the shadow, you can see everything from the shoulders all the way to the hands all moves. And you can see it looks pretty good in VR as well. Um, so yeah, so th that is our arms here in VR. And with that, that's how you implement some very basic arm movement into your VR projects. As I said, it is a very neat feature to have in any VR projects and really helps a player feel fully immersed within the environment that they're in. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, I will see you in the next reality.